Okay, today I'm going to show you how to change an iPod connector <clears throat> with just a soldering iron and a fair bit of swearing. Um, I'm the only person in the company that's been able to do it actually, but it's not that difficult. It's just that everyone else just can't be bothered. Is that unkind? I don't know. People, eh? Engineers especially. So here it is, it's the old 30 pin, this is the one, two, this is the seven point mount one with the mount around the back and you can see uh, this is a Bose unit and Bose have attached this using a surface mount soldering process, they're not even being hand soldered so the, the soldering on some of them is pretty icky, in fact on most of them you pull them they'll just come off but you don't want to do that because you'll rip all these tracks off. So you do have to exercise a modicum of self control boys when you're doing this or girls. So, I'll show you how to go about it. This one's completely knackered. Look, it's all mangled up inside. It's had, it's seen better days. I've got um, thousands of these connectors in stock. Where are they? These things. That's what they look like. <coughs> the old iPod jobbies. 30 pin. Originally made in Japan, copied in China. These are Japanese. Not Chinese, because the Chinese ones are absolutely, frankly, just complete crap. Or Taiwanese, in fact, aren't very good. But I think what it is now, if you get hold of these, you buy them. They have, they can't be asked to fix the tooling, and so the tooling's all worn. So these, I bought a huge stock of these the last time by before the tooling ran out. So um, yeah, if you want some, you know where to come. Um, yeah. So how do you get this connector off? Well, I'll show you, shall I? I'm working at arm's length here. Um, it's not easy for me, but give it a go. So the first thing you want to do is just go in here and snip that piece of plastic, that piece of metal there, plastic. Snip there and there, so this part comes away separately, okay? And so does that one. Then you want to do this, I mean this is why, oh look at that, it's actually broken. Can you see that's broken there? I didn't do that. I did that though, didn't I? But, okay, so then we've got this uh, cut off. Now, at the, on the end piece here, you need to put your cutters on there and just gently without hitting the board just cut through there like that okay so that piece is now separate and you do the same thing at this end snippy snippy and now you turn the soldering iron on because I've got to turn the soldering iron on alright so we've got um, the name of the game now is to get these metal bits out and it's going to be tricky with me holding it as well, but I'll give it a go just for the sake of uh, demonstrating to you guys. This little bit here needs to be levered off the front, I think, because I can't even bloody see it properly. There you go. So like that, and one like that. All right. So this bit is now detached. So we're going to remove this just one piece at a time and can you see the actual, talking about the Bose soldering, can you see here, yeah it has, uh, someone's wrenched the iPod and it's broken away there so this, this is coming loose already so we might not need to solder that one. Um, yeah so solder iron is on so the first thing to do is to get some of the gorgeous leaded solder just to get this thing flowing. Iron set to 150, iron should be set to 400, iron set to 400. Give it a good old wipe on the, the robot pubes. And then just add some more solder to these joints. Come on baby. Melty, melty. There we go. It's just going to make the next step easier. Okay, so they're all limbered up and ready to go. Let's do the other three then. We'll do them all while we're here. If you do this the uh, lovely leaded will mix with the horrible unleaded and make a lower melting point alley 
alley, alley, alloy, alley, alley. So if you just um, I'm gonna do this, I normally do this in a sort of a precision bench mount device, but I'm gonna do this by hand. So I'm gonna grab hold of that bit in the cutters, use the cutters as a pair of pliers, like all engineers <laughs> do. It's like my dad used to say, when you've only got a hammer, everything starts to look like a nail. So we're pulling out that one. I believe. There you go, that's that one gone. Could use my fingers, couldn't I? If I hear me screaming, you know that the heat has come through. So that's the first bit off, okay? Exposing that. Alright. Now we're going to take these bits out, so you can just hook your nail behind and again shout. And then this, that's, uh, where did it go? That's this, this bit removed now, with a little leg. So we're ripping away at a bit of time, a bit at a time. And then this one, that one's gone. You can see it's <laughs> there's less and less connector. Now the tricky, the tricky, tricky bit is to gonna be to desolder this. Um, if you try and desolder this and pull this, you'll pull these these tracks off. Okay. So what you can do is this. If you just get a bit of copper wire, if I can find mine. There. Make a complete solder bath, right? You will need some of the old Kingbo uh, RMA218 or similar flux to do this. Least, least ways, that's what I've always used and it's always worked for me, but you may be better than me. But I'm only just the expert, so don't ask me. So, you want a piece of couple wire like that, and you want to cut it to about that length, like that. And then what we do is we uh, might need to tape this down for this next stage. Could do with taping it at that sort of angle, couldn't we? What have we got that would hold that on there? Anything? This little stand. Work. Uh, I'm just going to tape that down and I'll be back. Okay, so now she's fixed down. Hopefully I'll be able to work on her. Now, um, I would normally use a hot air gun for this, pro this part of the process, but as I'm showing you how to do it with the solder iron, I'm going to put my money in my mouth is and try and make this work. So the idea is to use that copper wire as a buzz bar to melt all those connections, okay? So uh, the first thing you want to do really is to prevent any sludging up of the, uh, the solder into a horrible pasty solder. Um, rather than nice liquid solder we end up with an oxidised sludge of solder, which is not what we want. So we want a bit of the old flux on there like that. Okay, a little bit of flux. A bit more on there as well. It comes off easy enough with the old isopropanol. Right, so that's that. Now, <coughs> give her a bit of a bath. Hot supper. Oh, smoke. We we'll obviously use a hot air gun if you can, but if you haven't got one, you're going to have to use this method on you, let's face it. It's not pretty. But we're on a voyage of discovery here, boys. That's if I don't die of solder fume poisoning. Now you can see, we've got a bar of solder going all the way along all the way up, worked up all those connectors. So I can melt the whole lot in one fell swoop, one bit of a heating session. Clearly you need a half decent iron to be able to do this. See that? And then when you're confident that it's all molten, you can just push it away like that. And she's off. Okay, all tracks intact. Clearly, you don't need to use this soldering iron. Uh, soldering iron. I'm talking rubbish today. I think I've got my worms mixed up. Um, this pronunciation of your worms is always a problem. Let's get some tweezers. Right, so yeah, you can see they're all intact. It's nicely done. This hasn't broken off and damaged any of those connectors. So we can just actually, this is um, half hanging off already. Look, there. See, that's the 
That's the strength of the bow's soldering of the uh, anchor points on their connectors. It's not good. So what are we going to do? We're going to put a little bit more flux on. Again, if you don't use your flux, you should, because it's good. Things go better with flux. Remember that. And remember where you heard it first. And now I'm going to try and find a decent piece of this. Is any good? Is this stuff any good? I've got some of this. Um, if you buy this braid, this desoldering braid, and you're disappointed with it, it's because you've got a crap one that doesn't flow. Some of them are absolutely work like, you know, the solder just goes in there and soaks it all up like a, a damp paper tissue. But others are not good at all. And bear in mind, you need a good soldering iron because this is copper and it will wick the heat away. And if you, you're cleaning away and then you accidentally solder the wick onto the, uh, the PCB, when you pull it off, it'll pull the tracks off. So you've got to make sure you keep the thing hot. Hot and ready, basically. As it's actually it attached itself there. Okay. So the pads are clean. We're going to give them a bit of a wipe over in a minute. And if we just um, put some more flux, I know flux, 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 flux. You love the flux. I love the flux. You want to watch this channel? Get it used to the flux, haven't you? Right. The fluxy flux. Bear in mind, you have to give, cut me some slack here because I'm doing this at arm's length because I can't get close because I'll be under the camera. And then just add some more lovely jubbly solder, flow solder. Now you can use the soldier sucker. Um, actually, we used to call it something else. There we are. There's my trusty old soldier sucker. Um, you can use the solder sucker like so, heat it up, wait for it to go through, heat through the other side and sucker off, as it were. Or you can trim your flux stuff, and usually if you get a good piece of this stuff and put a bit of flux on it, flux, 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 you can usually suck the hole out with your soldering iron. It is that good. Is it going to work for me or is it going to prove me a liar today? It only works on the thinner boards. No, it's not going to work today, is it? Or is it? Come on, drink it up. Take it all, bitch. Come on. Come on. No, it's going to be a solder sucker. You can have to invent, invest in a two quid solder sucker from Banggood. You yeah, haven't got one. Anyway. On the thinner boards, like the one mil boards, you can do that with the uh, with the braid, but not today. She's not playing ball with us. Sucky, sucky. Oh. That one's not liking it, is it? Let's put some nice leaded solder back in that hole to make a nice alloy and then clean it up. Look at that. Okay, so there she is, boys. Oh, that one again, I've just messed that one up. There we got it. Did you get my head in that? I hope not. Right, so now we need a toothbrush. You can use a pink toothbrush or a white toothbrush, doesn't matter. And uh, isopropanol, isopropyl alcohol, lovely stuff. And just give her a Clean up. Lightly brushing to and fro in a reciprocal manner. To brush for two minutes, do one side at a time. Give it a bit of a rinse to wash off all the flux. Contaminate my bench just for you. I normally do this over the bin. And there it is. So what we've got to do is put this connector on and find it. What do I do with it? Put it back on the shelf. Bless me. This goes back in there. Like that. He says. There. On there. Like that. 
okay it's sitting at a 15 degree angle and you can see by there is leeway on there you can see when I push that across I don't know if you can see that hold on a minute I'll spot the obvious continuity error I am um, I completed the video recording and did all the soldering on the other bit and um, on one stage I failed to press record or it was in standby or something so I'm just gonna have to <coughs> turn the soldering iron on and just show you what I did so that you've got a complete guide to how to do this sorry about that but after this bit it switches back to the other board but the, I'm just gonna show you the bit I missed out so these connectors look I've got a little step there can you see that can you see that um, and it's important that the board is sitting flat that these sit down on the board in the right position and if they're too far back then your pins won't be in touch with the pads and it'll make them an awful lot more difficult very difficult not impossible but much much more difficult to solder so you want to ensure that the pins are sitting down on the board okay so what you do is make sure that it's actually sitting squarely like that and also that it's lined up so you have to adjust this so the pins line up with the pads I'm talking about in the X direction laterally and then when it's in position this is the bit I missed off on the other board and you'll see when we cut back to the other board this bits already been done so I'm going to show you how to do it here because it's back to exactly the same thing except it's a new board one of the development boards and you just touch this area here with solder solder that one in and then put some pressure on it to make sure it's straight okay and then you're going to check have a really close look to make sure that it's all sitting there look all around it make sure it's in position then do the same with this one solder the connector in okay um, and then turn it over and just solder the back pins as well so you go around these one at a time and solder them in okay won't bother doing them all but that's a step I missed out on the other board because like a twit I forgot to press the record button so now the connector's sitting down all the pins are in contact with the board inspect it carefully before you go any further because if these pins aren't sitting down on the pads it will make it more difficult for you alright make sure it's lined up in X, in X anyway so that's that stage and now we're going back to the original video or the original board should I say because um, that's the bit I forgot to press the record button still subscribe to me though don't don't treat me badly right you sitting comfortably what do you rate my chances as? Let's get a bit more light on the subject. Right, a bit better light. A bit of light for me. I can't get in there, can I? I'm going to lower my seat. Get my head down on the bench. Right. I'm now sitting with my knees up around my chin. Just so that you can see how this is done. And you'll say, I can do this already. So, all right, go and watch a different channel then. We don't like abuse. There we are. So we've got some of the old flux jollop. Now you have to be a bit careful because that can migrate up the pins and cause your connection problems. So when you clean this connector, give it a damn good clean. The last thing you do is get a toothbrush, a clean brush and some alcohol. <coughs> and clean the actual connections themselves. Alright. So we're going to go along and solder each pin. bit of solder okay did you see that <laughs> you didn't see that did you um, oh let's get a bit closer let's get closer one moment I'm gonna try a bit of whip her up and telly macro hold on how's that you chaps and girls watching on iPhones and what have you oh, bollocks. how is that I've got a problem with the cable at the moment okay start again how's that <laughs> you can see can you see I can see can you see that I can't bloody see it now it's so small but using my shaky hands gonna have to have a wrist rest here there we are you're letting the solder Reservoir on the soldering iron. Migrate onto the pins to fill the gap. 
Can you see that? I can't see bugger all. I'm just doing this by touch virtually. I can do it with my eyes closed. <laughs> Wish I could. Keep your tip clean boys and girls. Looks like I've got Parkinson's or something, don't I? But I haven't. As far as I know, more than the tip, more than the reservoir. You're relying on the very high surface tension of molten solder to draw the solder, like blotting paper, into the gap between the pin and the board. Okay, lovely jubbly. So don't hurry and don't debt too much on your tip because if you get too much on the tip you'll get a short and you don't want that. Clearly you're going to need a bit of a pointy soldering iron. Reflow, Just touch them up, even them out. Right, so obviously you're going to inspect this, but at this stage what you can do is this. Get yourself a scalpel, don't cut yourself, and just run the blade along and see if any of the pins are loose. They'll ping to one side quite easily if they're loose. You'd see if one of those was loose now it would just move. Now they're all soldered. And then <coughs> give her a bit, of a, a bit of a clean again. A jolly good clean at this stage. Clearly check for bridges. There are no bridges because I did it. Give us a cloth. Come on, bloody dog's useless. Give her a bit of a polish now. She needs a clean. I'm rubbing away here. Talk amongst yourselves while you, all you can see is my scalpel blade handle. Scalpel blade handle? Scalpel handle. I don't know what's wrong with my words, boys. I've got the skills, I just haven't got the language at the moment. And there you have, just dry it off. So the last thing you do is clean the actual connector inside with a brand new clean brush and some isopropyl alcohol or contact cleaner will do it. But contact cleaner tends to leave an oily residue and you don't want that because stuff will stick to the oily residue. So there you can see a brand new connector for an iPod. Just blow out the uh, IPA between the legs and you can see no bridges, all soldered. All right. So that, gentlemen and ladies, is how you do that. I'm just going to touch that one up a bit actually. Put a little bit of flux on there, it's a bit blobby. You don't want that too blobby because if there's too much solder on there, it can stop the cradle going down over it. So I'm just going to take some of that off with the solder iron. Clean your tip. Right, so that's one side, and that's the other side, bit of flux there still, but you get the gist, just do it carefully, patiently, and it's perfectly possible to change an iPod connector with just a soldering iron, 
and a bit of application as my engineering manager lecturer used to say you young buggers too much of a bloody horror you are uh, anyway so if you like that want to see more tips and things then down in the corner of the screen there is a little um, subscribe button you can press that and then you can see other useful tips i hope you enjoyed that and uh, thanks for watching and goodbye